Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about graphing linear equations in slope-intercept form. Let's remember that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, please make sure that you have all the materials you're going to need. You of course need a pencil, you will need a straight edge or ruler, and you'll also need graph paper. Please jot down example 1, y equals 3x minus 7. All right, if we're in slope-intercept form, then m and b, our slope, and our y-intercept are very easy to identify. m, our slope, is always the number that is sitting directly in front of our x. In this equation, our slope is 3. I'm going to rewrite 3 as a fraction because I'm going to want to remember to use slope as rise over run. So the fraction that's equal to 3 is 3 over 1. Okay, now b. When I identify b, I'm going to be looking at the symbol that's in front of b. Remember, b is going to be represented by the number that does not have a variable attached to it. And in this equation, we've got b is equal to negative 7. Okay, b is the starting point on our graph. So we're going to go to the y-axis. B is where does the line cross the y-axis, and in this equation it crosses at negative 7. So I'm going to count 7 below the origin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I'm going to put a point on the y-axis at negative 7. All right, now from there, I'm going to be counting up 3. Remember, my slope is rise over run. So I'm going to be rising 3, 1, 2, 3, and going to the right positive 1, and I'll put another point. From there, I will want to go up 3 again, rise 3, and to the right 1. And I'm going to keep putting points at rising 3, run to the right 1, I'm going to want several of these points on my graph. The more points we have on our graph, the more accurately we will line up our straight edge and be able to draw our line. All right, we're going to line up our ruler and draw a straight line through those points, and I'm going to want to take up as much graph as I can. I don't want a tiny little line segment. I want a full across the graph line. And once I've got it on there, I'm going to draw an arrow on both ends of my line, which indicates that our line could continue on and on. All right, in this example, please jot down this example. When we go to identify our slope, remember slope is m, the number that's in front of our x. We want to be careful with this one, okay? Our number in front of our x is negative 1 fourth. Now notice how that negative sign is sort of floating in front of our fraction 1 fourth. I would recommend that we attach that negative sign to one of our numbers, either the 1 or the 4, um, not both, so that we don't lose track of that negative sign. I always like to attach to the numerator, so I'm going to attach it to the 1, and my slope is negative 1 fourth. Now, b, remember b is always the number with no variable attached to it, and it's always after our x. However, there is no number after the x. There is no number that doesn't have a variable attached to it. That means our b is 0. Okay, so when we go to graph, 0 is our starting point on the y-axis. That means our starting point is right here on the origin. Okay, so we'll draw that starting point in on the y-axis, and remember, now we'll use our rise over run. Because we have a negative 1 for the rise, it means we're going to go down 1 and to the right 4, and that's where we'll put our point. From that new point, we will again go down 1, right 4, and draw another point. Okay, now... We can have slopes that are opposite of the current slope. That means we could have a positive 1 with a negative 4. 
Now, if I go back to the origin, which was my starting point, that means my rise over run could be rise positive 1, so up 1, and run negative 4. That means left 4. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and grab our straight edge and draw in our line. Remember after you've drawn your line to draw arrows at both ends. Alright, looks good. Example 2 is done. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at example 3. Okay, this time when I go to identify my slope, remember M, always hanging out in front of the X, I don't have a number hanging out in front of the X in example 3. Okay, let's think about the question, how many X's do we have if there's no number in front? You got it, that means there is one X. Okay, so I'm going to draw that one in there, and that helps me know that my slope is one. Remember, if I want to write my slope as a fraction, I could simply write it as one over one. Okay, um, my b in this equation is positive two, and remember b is our starting point. That's where we're going to go to on the y-axis, and positive two on the y-axis is right about here. From there, my slope is up one, right one. So up one, right one, up one, right one. Okay, and I'm going to keep going, give myself several points going up one, right one, and then we'll go ahead and take our straight edge and draw our line. All right, here's what our line should look like. Don't forget to draw that line all the way across your graph. Use up as much of the graph as you can, and make sure you put the arrows at both ends. Okay, example four looks a little different, okay? What's different about this equation, y equals five, is that there is no x, all right? That makes it kind of confusing for us sometimes to identify what our slope is and what our y-intercept is because we don't see an x. So if you have an equation that has either just a y or just an x, I'm going to give us a different strategy to use. We're going to go ahead and make an XY table. This strategy is only to be used if we have one of the variables, either just X or just Y. In this case, we have just Y. That means we're going to go to the Y column of our XY table, and whatever they're telling us Y is equal to, that's what we're going to put in for two different Y values. Now, x values, we are going to let you have some student choice here. You may choose any x values that are on your graph. Okay, now on our graph, it looks like we're going from about negative 10 over here to positive 10 over here. So we can choose any x values between negative 10 and positive 10. So I'm going to choose negative 3 and positive 4. I just randomly chose those. You could pick any values. All right, now that we have those values, we are going to graph those ordered pairs onto our um, coordinate plane. So our first ordered pair is negative 3, 5. That means we're going to go across to negative 3 and up to positive 5 and draw a point. Okay, there's my point in yellow. Okay, our next ordered pair is positive 4, positive 5. I'm going to start back at the origin. I'm going to go across to positive 4 and up to positive 5 and put in another point. Okay, now that I have my two points there, I can see that if I grab my straight edge and connect them, I'm going to get a horizontal line. Now, we're going to go ahead and draw that right now, so go ahead and grab your ruler and do that. All right, now that I drew my horizontal line and threw the arrows at both ends, notice that I went all the way across my graph, using up as much my graph as I can. Um, now let's talk about the slope, okay? We have um, talked about slope of horizontal lines before. If we count our rise over run between our two yellow points on the graph, 
I am rising zero and I'm running, it looks like I'm running um, eight. Okay, remember that if there's a zero in our slope, we need to identify what that means. Zero divided by eight is equal to zero, which means our slope is zero. All right, as for B, remember B is the y-intercept. What they're really asking us is where does our line, our linear equation, cross the y-axis? And it crosses the y-axis right here where I'm going to draw a little x at 5. Okay, we could also list that as an ordered pair as the point 0, 5. All right, here is our last example. Example 5, the equation is x equals negative 2. Notice there is no y in this equation. If there's only an x or only a y, remember we're going to go with that new strategy of making an xy table. In this equation, they tell us that x equals negative 2. That means we're going to go to the x column and put in a couple of negative 2's. Our y value can be anything in between positive 10 and negative 10, anything that's along our graph. So I think I'm going to pick positive 1 and negative 3. Remember that you could pick any y values that are on your graph. We're going to go ahead and graph those points. The point negative 2, 1 would be up, starting at the origin, going left, negative 2, and up to positive 1. And the point negative 2, negative 3, if I go back to the origin, I'll be going left to negative 2 and down 3 and then go ahead and put that point in. Okay, when I connect these, I can see I'm going to get a vertical line. So please grab your straight edge, draw your vertical line with your arrows. All right, so now if I'm going to look at my slope and my y-intercept of these points, okay, it looks like I am rising 4 to get from one point to the other, and I'm running 0. Remember that if I punch into my calculator 4 divided by 0, it's going to give me an error message. And I think you know what that means. You're right, our slope is undefined. Okay, now as for our B, remember B is where does our line cross the Y axis? All right, so let's take a look. Here's our Y axis. Where does our line that we drew cross that? You're right. It doesn't cross that. In the case of a vertical line, there is no y-intercept point. So when they ask us to identify b, we're going to simply write none because there isn't a point where our line crosses the y-axis. All right, you guys, you've got everything you need. Good luck.